don't say anything, just watch this video, and then we'll tell the rest of the story. This is the inspiring story of Dual Arak, a 30-year-old pilot whose once vibrant and exciting life seemed to come to a grinding halt in the month of November 2021, following several startling complications that stemmed from a medical procedure to remove an almost ruptured appendix. The events that followed his seemingly easy procedure completely altered the course of his life as the surgery took on an unexpected twist when his large and small intestines were mistakenly punctured in the process. The aftermath of this plunged him into a period of sickening pains and frustrations. As he was later diagnosed with an abdominal abscess, he subsequently was diagnosed with gastrointestinal fistula. His immediate family was adversely affected as well, for they were depleted financially and emotionally, having spent so much on his medical bills. Numerous social media appeals were made, soliciting funds from the public to cater to the soaring medical expenses. He was shuttled from one specialist hospital to another, both at home and abroad. For 10 long, grueling months, Duo Arak underwent nine open bowel surgeries during which 70% of his intestines were removed. However, despite the best humanly possible redress attempts to his debilitating health problems, they all proved abortive as lasting solutions eluded them at each try. Watch his story. It all started in October 2021. He had just returned from school, I think a month or so before now. Um, and he started complaining of incessant tummy aches. So this day he called me and, and said it was really bad. He felt a lot of pains in his stomach and he had taken everything and that it wasn't working. So I asked that he had to go and see a doctor. And so he went to see a doctor in a private hospital and on seeing the doctor, he, the doctor asked that he be sent in for an immediate appendicectomy because his appendix was almost ruptured. On being wheeled uh, in for surgery on what was supposed to be the appendicectomy, um, the doctor mistakenly or so punctured several Parts of his um, lower and small and large intestines, you know. So, because of this, he started having several complications. It led to several things from then. His intestines had started decaying, his bowels busted out open, um, it just spiraled out of control. Um, when we saw that, about three surgeries had already happened within a week in that private hospital and that it couldn't be managed. He had already gotten down with septicemia in the private hospital. It was just about losing life and we could not, we asked that he be referred to the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. So he was referred to the teaching hospital. Immediately on, on referral, he was rushed in, he did an x-ray and every, every other thing else. And they noticed that there was there was a lot going on in the stomach. They, it, it, it was decaying. It was mucus. It was a bad it was a bad case. Um, the doctor said what he had to do was to carry out a laparostomy. A laparostomy is open up the 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 stomach again. And this was going to be the fourth time. On going in, he noticed that over forty percent of his intestines had gone and that's both the small and the large. So he had to take it off, he had to cut it out. And um, we thought that that was going to be the end. In fact, that was the hope that we had, yeah, that that was going to be the end and everything was going to go back. And we had been in the hospital for maybe about two months at, at, at that time. 
So, uh, only to to notice that uh, that was just the beginning of the the story, you know. So the doctor took it after the surgery. We went back to status quo. Everything spiraled again downwards. He was losing fluids. The stomach had busted open again. He started a developed fistulas in several parts of the stomach. We didn't know what to do again. We tried, the doctors tried all that they could and it just had to be that he was going to be referred abroad or to a better management facility. We moved him to Dubai, Dubai Hospital. And there again, they went in, they had to do a laparostomy again. That's another surgery to see what was going on. So they had to open him up again. This was about the sixth time that it was opened up like that again. They opened up. Those ones said they had to take out another 30% again because it was bad. So this is 40 plus 30% of his intestines. How many more is remaining? Just 30%. So how do you survive with 30% of your intestine? The doctor says that they ne he needed to have a brand new intestine. He could not eat, he could not talk, he could not walk. And he was having malnutrition, very, ti very tiny. And they put pipe all over his body, pipe in his nose, so as they can feed him through the nose, pipe in his tummy. Feces were coming out of his tummy. Pipe in his uh, uh, gr gr groin. Everywhere were pipe all over so that they can save his life and feed him through there. With this period, for this period of month we spent in the hospital, he, has, he died for four days, four times, four times. Dual Oroch and the members of his family realized that a supernatural intervention was all they needed for the solution they desired. News of the July 2022 Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris ignited faith and hope in their hearts. And as a family, they prepared earnestly for that one moment with divinity that will change Dual Oroch's life forever. The man of God, Pastor Chris, ministered with undiluted passion, love, and overwhelming authority. I bring you healing in Jesus' name. It's your moment. Doesn't matter for how long you've suffered it, doesn't matter. In a split second, a change will begin. In a split second. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I rebuke the pains in your body. I rebuke the sickness and the disease, whatever the disease has been, I command it to cease right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed of your infirmity. The weakness is gone. Strength has come back to you. In the name of Jesus, be made strong. Be made strong. Be made strong. Get up on your feet and walk. In the name of Jesus, you are free. At the same moment, what happened to Dual Arak all the way in Dubai, UAE, while participating in this service on his hospital bed was beyond phenomenal. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, well, Iraq is in the house. 
Let's make Wakon do a rock. Wow. Glory. Hey! I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive! Amazing! <laughs> Hallelujah! Wow, amazing! Amazing. For real? For real. Can this be you? Yes, for real, sir. Life? Congratulations. Thank you, sir. All right, introduce yourself and introduce Glory! Somebody shout Glory! Aroko Shiataya! Somebody shout Glory! For the last time, somebody shout glory! Oh, oh hallelujah. <laughs> All right. You know, we've got to talk. Okay. So introduce so yourself and is, introduce them. I'm so excited. My name is The Oroch Dwell Paul. And then this is my beloved mom, my mother. Mrs. Christiana, Pastor Mrs. Christiana Rock, and then that's my elder sister, the elder sister, Mrs. McDill. Congratulations. You know, the video, the video told all the story. Those pictures, and now we're seeing you live. Just talk to us briefly, because we want you to tell us more about how you received your miracle. Well, just first tell us how you got to that point very briefly and then you tell us more about how you received your healing. How the changes took place. What happened? How could you be so healed? <laughs> Glory. God is wonderful. Jesus is real. Anyone that does not know Jesus is old school. <laughs> I'm going to try as much as possible to make it very brief. Uh, last year, late last year, around October, November, it was just, you know, just got back to Calabar and uh, I was fine. Nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with me. Very okay. And... Uh, it was on, you know, on Saturday. As a matter of fact, on Saturday, I was with a friend who was getting married, pastor friend who was getting married, and he, I was his, one of his groomsmen. I had a very busy day that day with him, and, you know, we're running around and all that. On Friday, I was very busy. On Saturday, I was very busy. So I didn't eat that Friday. I can't remember if I ate well. I ate on Friday, but I know I didn't eat from the whole Friday evening. And then Saturday, I didn't have anything because I was so busy. I like to work. And uh, I didn't even stay till the reception of the wedding so I could eat. So I had to catch up with something else, choir rehearsals in church and all that. So I went back. I didn't eat that Saturday. I got home tired and I slept off on Sunday, you know, coming on from a religious background. You know, my dad is a reverend minister in, in the service of God. And so we... We, we are trained naturally not to, you know, eat on Sunday morning because you have to catch up with, he has to always catch up with, you know, Sunday school and other things very early in church. So he packed us all together. So I didn't eat that Sunday morning, you know. After the service, we had to run, I had to run over to the evening service. My brother ran an evening ministry in Calabar there. So I, I also participated you know, I was teaching, so I needed to just carry out of everything and catch up with the evening service so I could just catch up with the teaching. I went, and then before I could finish from the evening service, it was very late. We came back home. I was very tired. And then 
you know, people that came over with us, the food that was at home, we said we should just give it to them to eat. So I asked them to make something for me and my brother so we could just eat. But before they could finish preparing food and everything, it was already 1 a.m. in the morning because I remember they woke me up around 1 a.m. and I checked my time. They said, I should come eat. I said, I'm already tired, so I'll eat in the morning. Waking up in the morning, early hours of the morning, Monday morning, I started feeling some pains within my abdomen, very severe pain, you know. It was gradually growing, gradually growing. And I don't really, I don't find it comfortable because I've, I've, left, uh, I've lived with, with, with divine health for a very long time, so I don't take medications, I don't take paracetamol. And then my parents are aware of that, and then so, you know, having to even tell someone that I'm feeling something was a big challenge to me. But around 12, I remember, my mom was in morning, morning section, she's a nurse, you know. When she came back around 2, I had to just complain to her, mommy, I'm feeling some pains in my abdomen, this is becoming severe. And, you know, being a nurse, you know, she believes so much in medication, so she said, you, you have to take medication, take medication. They did everything. They tried till the evening. I couldn't. I didn't. But the more I was waiting, the more it was becoming more. The painful was becoming very severe. And then finally, they succeeded to tell me to take medication. So when I took the medication, it's as if everything in the world, at that point, the hairs in my skin, everything in my body tore apart. My body pains everywhere in my body. And then it wasn't up to three minutes. Three, between three, five minutes, I saw myself in the toilet, and then I threw up. And when I threw up, I threw up, you know, my, I, I can't really explain how, but I know it was, it's a terrible experience. I haven't felt like that in a very long while. And then immediately a call had to be placed to my elder sister that, uh, your brother is sick, oh, what do we do? We need to rush him, you know. I've never been to the hospital ever in my life since I knew myself. Never. I just know that I had one operation when I was a kid, a baby. But outside that, I don't know. I've never been to a hospital before. So having to say we should go to the hospital. I have a mom who's a nurse. So most times when things happen like that, you know, we just do home service and all that. And so they said they must take me to the hospital. Finally, they succeeded. We went to the hospital, a, a private clinic, you know, close to the house and... When we got there, the doctor said that, ah, this is appendix, and you have to operate it now, 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 now. If you don't know, if they need to, I was telling my parents, if they don't operate this boy now, 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 he's going to pass on. Uh, it seems, see, I, you must be operated. Huh. I say appendix, how, where? My father's never had appendix. Me, I've never had appendix. Nobody in my house have appendix. Where is this one coming from? So he said we should go do scan to be sure, you know, so we, 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 rushed, we, we he gave us um, a clinic where we could go to the scan, so we went there. The doctor did the scan on me, and then came out, the result came out, and then they said that there was no appendix. So we immediately we took the result back to him and then showed him. He said, no, it's appendix. So the appendix does not show sometimes that it's appendix, that we must do the operation, the surgery, now, now, if not. And then the pain was becoming too much. So my dad becoming scared and all that, you know, put a call across my sister. My sister said, no, they should take me to a Navy hospital. They should take me to you know, another hospital that is better. My parents said, no, we can't reach this. The doctor is threatening that, you know, he's going to get bad the next minute and all that. And then they started, you know, forcing me that, don't you think we should do this? I said, I'm a pilot, too, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like cut in my body. And I didn't even want any cut. But being that, you know, it was, the pain was becoming severe and severe and more, the more we were waiting, the more time was going and all that. So we had to just, you know, go ahead. I carried my phone and then googled, you know, check YouTube videos, appendix operation. I saw it was just a small cut. And then, funny enough, like, you know, 95% of the people that were around in, in the hospital, because we had people from church and friends, you know, who came around, had already done appendix, and all of them said the same thing. Appendix is one day. When they do you now, in two days, the next day you are out. So I said, okay, fine, let's go ahead. And then immediately they took me to the theater. That is how the doctor went and cut my intestine. My intestine was cut, and in fact, to cut the whole story short, in less than in that day, in less than two, in less than three days, in less than two days, I was operated three times. 
from the same doctor. Because after the first operation, you know, the next thing that happened is that my belly started swelling up. It was very big, but coming big, 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 big. So immediately, he said they have to take me in immediately, that he doesn't understand what is going on. So when, they took me in, when he took me in immediately, he opened me up again and then checked. You know, he kept, you know what came out from my, my, belly, my belly was blood. You know, it was these four liters, four liters of paint they use in painting. You know, four of it was filled. Four of it was filled. So after that, that was the next day. The next day, he took me in again, the third time, and then one caught me again, opened me up again, and then, you know, the operation did another one. And then this time, after that one now, my belly started swelling up. The next thing is that I was like, the next, the fourth, the fourth day now, this is after the third day, the fourth day, my belly started swelling up. It was becoming big, big. I could literally feel my tummy blowing up. It was like you want to burst. In fact, it was, I was feeling it opening. I started shouting. I was talking to my parents. My mom was confused. You know, at that stage, everybody was confused. So I called my sister. Say, I need to leave this place now. This is charged me from this hospital. Take me to another place. That my belly is breaking. It's bursting. So my belly was opening. I was feeling it opening like this. Opening, 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 opening. And then the crazy thing is that while we're doing it, the doctor was dead, trying to organize another, you know, operation and all that. So we said, no. My sister said they should take me up. So immediately, finally, my dad just, you know, they dragged me out from the hospital and then they took me to teaching hospital, Cross River State. While they took me to the teaching hospital, Cross River State, you know, I was there. Immediately they took me there. They, the consultant came in. When the consultant came in, he next thing he said, he said, no, this boy is not just feeling like the belly is blowing. The belly wants to blow off. The belly wants to blow off, actually. So to cut the story short, he said that what happened is that my intestines have been perforated. There are multiple holes in my intestines now. And then feces are the things passing out into my tummy. And then they are entering my blood now. So my whole blood is filled with feces and all that. So they are looking for a way to come out and then it wants to burst. So there is a medication we need to get. And that medication, I think one of them was about 75,000, about three of them, 75,000, that one was 20, something thousand, that one was 40, something thousand. He said they need to buy it now and I have to start living on it immediately if they don't buy it in the next few hours that I am going to pass. So that automatically brought fear and everything. So everybody ran, elter skelter, looking for how to go. So they went, saw the drugs, they got the drugs immediately. God just provided the money, they got the drugs, and then they bought the drugs for me. And then I took, the man was amazed. He does not understand how this boy lived. This boy is surviving. He said, no, for that, they have to take me in again. So he took me in again for another prayer. This consultant now took me in again for another prayer. In fact, to cut the whole story short, I was operated within there five times in my tummy. One place was opened five times. And then when they did the last operation there in, in, here in Nigeria, and it wasn't working, nothing was working. A friend of mine just called in, you know. Funny enough, I was just there because I didn't even know what was going on with me anymore. I was, you know, literally unconscious. I didn't know what was going on. But the first thing I, I remember that I could actually see myself. I don't know what happened. Maybe through a phone or maybe through a mirror or something. I saw myself and I saw a picture of this person. The fine boy was now this. And I, I just started crying. So a friend of mine, there's a friend of mine who literally every time he comes to Calabar, we will always hang around. So he came in. He's my classmate, my colleague in school. And then when he came in, he said that, you know, he was trying to apologize that he has gone home. He does not know why he cannot see me and all that. I said, ah, it's not your fault. It's my fault. Let me show you. So I sent my picture to him. Immediately I said, look at what your brother looks like now. No. He said, no, you don't hide sickness. You know, I don't know if it's a mistake or if it's God wanted it to. But I believe God wanted it to so that his name might be glorified. He just posted the picture, this picture on social media and said, look at dear rock. He needs help and he needs to be, leave the country immediately. It wasn't up to 10 minutes the picture went viral. The whole state, everybody, because I was a little bit famous in the state, I used to do counseling and, you know, for most of those things. So the whole picture went viral and everybody started, you know, people were starting, you know, this is not possible, this is not possible. And uh, the next thing, they started requesting for money and, you know, the governor, my governor, my governor, Governor Cross River State, you know, saw the picture. Literally, according to what I heard, he said, he said that, you know, he has thousands of messages, but he doesn't understand what happened that particular night. Around 2, you know, around 2 a.m. in the morning, he saw that picture and he started crying, being, a, you know, a compassionate person. He started crying. As he was crying, 
he couldn't wait. By 5 a.m. the morning, he was calling the commissioner for health to go confirm if this story is true in the hospital. And then the next day, the whole place was crowded, and then they came in, and then he made provisions for morning, and then said they should take me out. We were trying to take me out, my the embassy, the sorry, Emirate rejected me because of my body weight. You know, even operation, they couldn't do anything because I'd lost weight, I'd lost everything. I couldn't, my blood, you don't operate people with less than 55 PVC. But I was carrying 20 something, and then they were still cutting me and cutting me, and I was still a big, you know. That when was we, how you got to. That's how I got to Dubai. When we got to Dubai, to get it very serious, you know, you know the American pattern, they have to go through protocols of putting a, um, what's it called, appointment before the doctor. They tried to give up. We tried to book appointment with the doctors for days. They, it wasn't working. So they said we should go do a CT scan. We went for a CT scan. We sent the CT scan to them. When the doctor saw it, they said it's not possible. This is not the result for the CT scan. Because anybody with this CT scan cannot survive. So he said they have to operate it. They have to do their, it in their own hospital. Since this can in their own hospital. That Dubai is one of the best hospitals in Dubai. When they took me in and then they did the operation. As soon as the me that were trying to get the appointment with them, once they came out, they told my people, you will have to go. This person is not living here now. We are taking him and he has to be operated as soon as possible. So they took me in and she did another operation again. Caught me the same place. They opened me the same place again and then caught. By this time now, they've caught not 70% of my test and 80% of my test now because 50 was caught in Nigeria and 30 was caught in Dubai. So I was literally working with 20. 20. So I couldn't eat. There's nothing that can pass in through my mouth. I was literally passing feces in my mouth. Feces. When, you know, when the feces is looking for a way to come out, you know, and it doesn't, I'll just have to just open up like this and it will just come out. My mom will wash, my grandma came in, everybody, people around me wash until their hands got, because feces were coming out from here, they're coming out from here, they were trying to come out from my bum bum, for, for them to come out, the, the ones that are coming out here are liquid, liquid feces. So the ones that they want to come from my bum bum cannot come out. So it has, it will now turn to good Good feces, you know how good feces to be, very hard. So we literally have to, after two days, they have to put pump, you know, put in a big pipe in my bum bum and then pump it so that that one can come because that one is very heavy here. It cannot drop. So once it drops, you just see it drop like this. And then I cannot eat. There were a lot of pipes in my body, 14 pipes in my body. 14. 14. Pipes. Pipe in my neck, pipe in my nose, pipe in my hands, pipe in my penis, pipe everywhere, every part of my body. They put me pipe here, and then each of those pipes comes with two. So that's 24, because one has to go in with fluid, and one has to take out fluid. And then my blood, my blood, my blood, my blood, they say it's the 100% blood, you know, had carried about 90% of feces. You know, blood, my highest part of the blood comes with water. So the water was all feces, and then I'd taken another part of my white blood scale that was feces. So nobody understand how I was surviving. By this time, I'd already passed on, and then, you know, a lot of things had happened to me. So you, you pause a moment. This is... That was terrible. Mama, just very briefly. Okay, sir. You know, you were there with him. Your beloved son from yes. the very beginning. What was it like for you in the family? How did this condition affect your family? Hallelujah. Life was very difficult. Because at this time, we have spent a lot of money. And they, our government also assisted us. So the life was very difficult in the family. My daughter, they were running around. They were trying you know, making a way, a way out for, for us to be able to pay and make sure that he's alive. But there is one thing I saw, even when he was there, you know, he, he died four times. During that period of his, that one, he, he, he told me when I came, because they, I don't, they don't allow me to sleep in the hospital. I always came back. When I came in the morning to see him, he told me, Mommy, I had 
a, uh, I, I had a dream. I saw Pastor, I saw Pastor Christ praying for, for, for a lot of people, and he was praying for me. And I, 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 I believe, during, this was during the period of healing stream. That I am believing that I am receiving my miracle. That was on Friday. That was on Friday. So I really believe before then, before then, during t- t- the second time he, he was dead, he told me that he, he saw himself in heaven. And there he, he they gave him a, a white suit. He saw Jesus. Jesus told him, which you have come here. Are you, are you preferring going back or coming and staying here? She says, he saw me crying and saw others crying, saw the sisters and friends crying. So he said, he said, you want to go back and see the mom, that the mom will not be able to leave. So they opened the square and he, 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 was, he was pushed in and he opened up to see himself alive. Hallelujah. So that was it. And another thing I saw God was when they told me that he, he should, I should look for intestine for him. That was, the, I said, where will I have the money? Because already we have spent the money. They, they, we have spent all we had so that he will leave. They said, we should, I should start to look, look for himself because he was, he was not gaining weight. His weight was, was 34, 34 uh, kg. During, he was not gaining weight. He was not eating. He started developing best you No, know, he, uh, he was not able to talk. He was just nodding. As you are talking, he's nodding. Nodding, he cannot talk. So, the, the, the doctor told me that I should look for intestine for him. I start asking, where will I see the intestine? They told me that I should Google. There are four star nations I can Google. But eventually, I can see. They mention India, they mention USA, and they mention, uh, they mention England and one other nation like that. I, that scared me. I start crying. Okay, Mama, uh, let you pause. Okay. You were the one, beloved sister. You, you were the one that recommended him to, to attend the Healing Streams Life Healing Services, right? Yes, Pastor. Why did you think he was going to be healed? So Looking at the way he was. Um, Pastor, we had gotten to the end of medical science. You know, medical science had, had, gotten, had done their best, the best that they could. So we knew, I knew, everyone in the family knew, because just before then, I think a week before the healing streams, they had called me. This was when they had done the last surgery. After the surgery, the doctors were expecting that he was at least going to live something, somewhat of a normal, maybe life, not normal, but he was going to be alive. But after the surgery, two weeks after, just the week before the healing streams, they called me and said that he was throwing up blood. So, you know, We were expecting that it was going to get better. It was getting worse. How do you begin to throw up blood? The doctors were confused. So at that time, I had to tell everyone in the family that we have gotten to the end of medical science. At this time, there is nothing medicine can do. The doctors himself, or the doctors, the team of medical doctors, called me from abroad and said to me that, Um, there is nothing that they think they should have done that they have not done. So they don't know where this blood is coming out from. So they had to rush him again from that hospital to another hospital. So there is nothing medical science could have done anymore. Even if there was anything medical science could have done, how does he live with 20% of his intestines? How does he survive the rest of his life and carry out his profession with 20%? So I knew that we needed an intervention of the supernatural. And that's why I recommended that we had to stay our faith up as a family and connect everything that we had to the healing stream, sir. And you made sure he did. So, now just tell us briefly and direct how you received your miracle. Thank you, sir. I you know, you know, when the picture went viral, my family started complaining, you know, this is not supposed to go, it's too embarrassing and all that. But, you know, God just wanted to use that 
so that when the miracle happens, when Mr. Testimony is sitting down here today, you know, they, when this miracle happens, the same way people saw, they will not say it's fake. It's story. Absolutely. It's story. Absolutely. Because everybody already know that this person, people started saying he's going, what, why are you spending money? In, you know, why is the money coming? Just keep the money for burial and all that. Pastor, sir, when, when he left, when we're about to get him abroad, a, a medical doctor friend of mine who is in church, you know, we had sent him abroad and they were doing several things. And we got to that point. So we were having a program in church. So she called and asked me, how, how far? How about him? I told him. So she needed to cascade the information to a, the surgeon that did the other surgery on him in Nigeria. So she said when she called the doctor and told him, the doctor just started looking at her. She's a doctor also and said, why are you behaving like you're not a medical doctor? How do you expect that boy? I just did what I had to do in Nigeria. That boy is not going to survive. You all know. Why are you talking like if you don't know that he's not going to survive? Why did you people bother to waste that money and send him abroad? He was, he's going to die anyways. So this by itself is the, the hand of God in the life of a man. So while we, well, after we did the whole, they say, my sister, I was supposed to participate in the match edition of the healing scream. I, I participated actually in teaching hospital that I was still in Nigeria. But at, that, at that time, because of me, they hold this thing, you know, she's been an, a, a, a senior person in church, you know, organized, they brought the street to the hospital where you had over 50 sick patients around, you know, trying to. And then they did everything possible for me to be on screen so the man of God could pray for me. So the first day, it was three days. First day, second day, third day, I couldn't come on screen. I didn't receive my, my miracle. So when we went to Dubai and then we heard that, you know, the healing stream is coming, she already said that you have to participate. So the same thing, they started putting me up for this. But before this time, people, God just caused people to just start praying for me. Anybody that sees this picture will just start praying for me. Dubai Church Charger. Dubai Church Charger. Christ University Charger. Oh God, they were so amazing. You know, they set up people to come set up there in Dubai. You know, Dubai is more of a Muslim country. And, you know, they refuse most of So by this time, you know, they brought, sent some members to come organize, you know, set up my laptop for me. I was already getting, I couldn't stand up. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't talk. I couldn't eat. I didn't know what I just knew that I was looking at the screen. And then I started imagining. I know I had passed on. I had come back. And I know that I, I am not supposed to die. So if, for me to live, I cannot live like this. It is not possible to live like this. So it's either you kill me, God, or you give me back my life. So it was like a 50-50. And then it must come through a channel because there's always a channel. And then I knew that channel was through the ministry of Pastor Chris. So I just, I was set. I was ready, sitting down in my, in my listen, waiting for the service to come up. The first day, they tried to put me up on screen. They were calling the Holy Ghost, trying to see how they can set me up. The second, because my sister so believed, my sisters, both of them, and my brother and my father, they so believed that I was going to be healed. So I connected to that immediately. So when the service started, the first day, I was not on stage. Second day, I was not on screen. The third day, I had a dream. In that, my dream, it was like a big field where they were having a crusade, and Pastor Chris was the one ministering. While he was ministering, before he could come out, there was a line that held people, you know, from getting close to him. So I was in that line. I don't know, I was a little bit distracted and then just stepped out. Just a second, somebody else took over my line. And then I tried to fight with the person to let me, my feet. I didn't even have like oh, that, that dream to, you know, fight. So the person said, my family turn, my family turn, no, you cannot. So when I woke up, I understood what it was. I understood that, you know, I'm not going to be on screen. So even when they were trying to do their organizing for me to be on screen, I said, we have over 7 billion people in the world. And, I, you know, I've already followed this program for two sections now, the March addiction and the, the, the uh, September, the July edition where I got healed. You know, I already know that after Pastor finished praying for the people that were in the healing school, you know, and... The next one is to pray for the next section, and then he will now pray for the world. I said that time he's praying for the world. Since I am not in Lagos, I can be here. I am connecting to the seven over seven point 
five billion people in the world. I am the one to take everybody's miracle. So whether they like it or not, because I cannot go back. You know, where do we have money to fly dead body from Dubai to Nigeria? Or to start communicating to my sister that I couldn't participate in it. I didn't receive my healing. And, you know, living like this again for the next this thing. When everybody was complaining, was giving testimony of pains, I understand what it is because, you know, for the past how many, years, how many, how many, how many months, I have lived in constant pain. You're touching me here, it's painful. You're touching any part of my body is painful. Everywhere. So I said, no, I cannot continue. Like this one, I must be here, whether they like it or not. So when pastor started praying, by this time, you know, you know, I have pipe on my body that they use in feeding me and all that. As pastor just started praying, as he was saying, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, willing. I just believe that I am. Because I understand that, I understand that faith is, faith actually is a currency. And then that currency has to, you know, you have to build that currency. So I was already sowing into that currency a lot in my mind and then building on my faith. Though I don't even have to go through the healing school process and all that. I was banking into it a lot with the faith of the people in the world that were praying for me. I said, no, these prayers cannot go in vain. And then I came to it. So when Pastor just said in the name of Jesus, as soon as you just started praying for the world, I removed the pipe from the nose. I removed from my hand. I, removed, I started removing everywhere. The doctor said, you know, my mom was shaking. She started crying. He said, oh, D, 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 you, you're not supposed to do this. They are going to come. I said, mommy, I am healed. Before next time, I, I, I already stood up. I started walking. I started walking and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. The doctors that used to try to make me walk, the, the, the next thing, they, you know, everybody was confused. They say uh, in the Dubai hospital was broken into two for the first time because they gave me they gave me nine doctors. They gave me phytotherapists, psychologists, um, uh, um, nutritionists, uh, all kinds of doctors they gave to me, but none of them. You know where they stop? That is when God continue. It, this is immediately my operation just finished. Just this, a day after they finished my operation was when the healing stream started. Just a day after they finished my healing, my, they, they finished my last operation, the doctor, the Kozotan, the, one of the best doctors in Dubai, he said that I have done my best. I don't know what to do anymore. Just when it stopped, he said, the next thing is that we need to go into theater. The last time for operation, this time they want to put in the biggest pipe in my nose that they're willing to feed me for life. On Monday, and then this is on Sunday. Thursday. Healing stream started on Friday. So Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, Monday, they are supposed to take me in. On Monday, I called them. I said, please, I want to go in. They said, no, let's wait. We waited till... Well, to be, the operation was supposed to be for 7 a.m. in the morning. They said, let's wait till 9. 9, they said, no, let's wait till 12. They waited till 12. They said, okay, this boy is okay. He has to be charged. Two days later, they discharged me. Glory! Two days later, they discharged me. They discharged me from the hospital. And then, sir, please, let me just, this is very important. At this point now, you know, after they discharged me, we needed to pay the money. The money had grown to 300 and something, 300 and some, 375,000 dirhams. That's more than 75 million in Naira. You know, and this time we don't have any money again. So they say you've discharged, so you have to pay the money. At that point, we were confused too. We lost hope. Say, ah, they are going to put me in prison again. Now this boy is okay. And, <laughs> sir, just at that point, two days later, they say you've been discharged. They've cleared. The territory have taken care of the finance. Because oh. we called the government, called everybody, called my government, called this. They had given up on me. So they said, no, no, they cannot do anything. But Dubai government cleared the bills for me. And that was God showing. Hallelujah. God showed him again for me at that point, and then they discharged me from Just the talk to someone. Someone watching you. About to die, about to give up. Just one word. I believe there are billions of people watching this program now and all over the world. You don't have to be here. Pastor said something the last edition. He said, it is a flow. It's a connection. 
Once you can tie your faith, because there are two things I know. Number one, it is, it is the, 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 the key is belief. The key, actually, the key is belief. The code or the code is preparation. The key is believing. Just believe that you are healed. Once pastors just start opening, in fact, just hearing the voice alone, you don't need any other thing because as a Christian, as a child of God, it is your right to be healed. Christ died so that you cannot live in that pain again, sir. I have left in pain for, for months, living medications. Quickly, Up to today, they are tell, us something, tell us something. What are the things you can do now that you couldn't do? Sir, what are the changes? I used to, live, I used to live on med steady medications every day. Like, you know, drugs, flute and medication. They have to give me drugs everywhere. That, no, no more. No more. Since I left the hospital till today, I've not had paracetamol. Wow. You know, there is one other drug my mom used to give me, and I told her I'm stopping it. You know, she's still, I said, I'm stopping, and I've stopped it. I just believe it is gone. I could not, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you see, don't look at my body now, it's coming back fully. Yes. I am just, yes. I'm just, I'm, I'm three months old now. The first month, the first change was that. Once I left, you know, even in the video, you see, I was trying to run. I almost fell down. But now, in fact, before I left Dubai, I was, cli I was climbing one of the longest, you know, stairs. Now I can climb stairs. I couldn't climb anything of this level. But I climbed that today. There are things I could not do. If I want to stand up, I need to hold something and stand up. But now I can stand up alone. So many things. There are a lot of things, a lot of changes. My hair's. Could, we're not growing anymore. Everything had deteriorated. Everything. When I sleep, my intestines will be perforating. But I don't feel any of those things anymore. Yeah. As the day goes by, I'm seeing new changes and then new changes and better changes Hallelujah. and better changes. What would you like to say to the man of God, Pastor Chris? <sighs> I, I don't know what to say. Words are, not, are never enough. You know, Pastor Chris is, is a man sent by God. And I want to say, sir, for giving your life to allow people become blessed and healed. You know, thank you, sir. And sorry, sir, it, it doesn't happen here, I know. But, you know, it's all I could ever have. I just want pastor to just, you know, it's nothing for him. It's nothing at all. It's nothing. But I cannot live here. My, the Spirit of God wants me to sow into that ministry. But, sir, please, you help me. Please, sir. Please. Favor, please, sir. I'll, sir. I'll help you put it on the altar, right? Yes, sir. Please. please. You help me. Give it to pastor. Please. Okay. okay. Please. All right. okay. okay. Please, sir. I, I don't know how to say thank you to pastor. Sir, God bless you wherever you are. Thank you for the ministry you have decided to put. Because it's a lot of sacrifice to put yourself for selflessly for the nation, for billions of the world. We say, I am grateful. My family is grateful. My father is grateful. If my family, in fact, if the whole cross university is possible, they want to be on set. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to say thank you. God bless you, sir, for bless your ministry, you. sir. Congratulations. Want to see you? And thank you to the Healing Scream Ministry. Thank you to Christ Embassy Dubai. Thank you to Christ Embassy Charger. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. I love you. I have seen love and I am experienced love. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Glory. I am a testimony. Glory! 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 You know what? May God always give you a voice to shout and praise Him. Amen. The sister said, you want to say something? Praise the Lord! Our heart is bursting out with joy. I want to say, I owe Pastor a debt of gratitude. And for everyone watching the healing streams, billions of people around the world. You know, we, had, uh, we read in the Bible about the pool of Bethesda where the angel will come and stir the water. 
and just one person will be healed. This is the pool of Bethsaida of today. Everyone, the, the beautiful thing with this is that everyone is getting a healing, is getting a miracle. The angels are being sent in their billions around the world by a man of God to go propagate healing, to go with a blanket of healing around the world. And it is you that have the opportunity now to take your healing. The healing is available. Just take it. Like Dwell did for himself. Take your healing. Because the healing is there in abundance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you're not healed, it is not pastor's fault. It's your fault. Tie your faith to this and you will be healed. It is your right, please. It is your right. Get healed. Yeah. You've heard it. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Wow. Glory. Thank you. 